everybody and welcome back to your last first and last for a minute. I'm not going to be getting rid of these all together, but as I recently announced here on the channel, we're going to be focusing a bit more heavily just on book reviews here. Uh, that does not mean everything's going away. It just means I'm going to be trying to emphasize what I feel are like the roots of this channel to begin with. But in the meantime, your boy still has contracts and sponsors who want to be paired with uh, certain videos that are related to their products. Very understandably so. So in the meantime, let's go out on a bang here with first and last and end where we started. Because I don't know why I'm acting like I'm revealing this. They're gonna see it in the title and thumbnail. We're doing the second book in the Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury. What makes this even more interesting is I'm confident I remember some details from what I think happened in the first book, but I'm not sure which of those details are things I actually read and which details are things I thought might have happened in the parts of the book I didn't read. So that means going into this one, who knows what the fuck's gonna happen. <laughs> and okay, people keep getting, I know we're supposed to be starting, but I got another point to make. Everyone keeps making these comments that are like, oh, this is just Daniel Duncan on these books. Every single video I have been like, except for one, <laughs> I've been like, these are fun. I like these books. I don't think they're bad. I predict them because they're fairly predictable books, but I don't think that's controversial to say at all. I like schlock. Oh, right, wine. <laughs> and a quick word from today's sponsor. <laughs> okay, welcome to more letter opening with Santa Claus, season 32, episode 805. Now it's time to open more letters from the good little boys and girls from around. Yeah. All right, first one we got here. Dear Santa, original. What are three things you wish people knew about Christmas? It actually started on a dare. I just tackled some deer. Uh, Stop playing, baby, it's cold outside. I don't know if that falls under the right category, but if you listen to that song, turn it off. I just want Christopher Lee's heavy metal Christmas album. Uh, yeah, I'm tired of cookies. Maybe a nice murrah. Because I don't know if people know this, I'm lactose intolerant. It's not sparkles Santa leaves trailing behind the sled. All right, dear Santa, what do you want for a Christmas present? Um, you know, like a 10 pack of hot sauce from Hot Ones signed by Sean Evans. And then, uh, and then just a simplified wine aisle. That would be really nice. The wine aisle's got too much going on. It's crazy in there. I'm seeing labels that are like choking elf. Uh-uh, I don't want that. I just want someone to pick out the wine for me. And we got one letter here from I like butts. Oh, sh you know what? That looks like Kyle's handwriting. Oh, Kyle. <laughs> you know what? Put him on the naughty list too. What's this? Bright sellers? Dear Daniel, I mean Santa, wishing you happy holidays. We heard your wish and we wanted to send you your Christmas gift. Bright Cellars is taking all the scare and pretentiousness out of wine shopping by bringing wines you'll love directly to your door. All you have to do is go and take our seven question quiz so that we can pair you with the wines that best match your tastes. We've even put wine education cards in every box so you can learn about your bottles. And if you don't like one, your concierge, me, guarantees to replace it. So come on over and join the 600,000 plus other five-star reviewers who love us. And as a big thank you for your continued support, Bright Sellers is offering your followers their first six-bottle subscription box for just $55. All they have to do is click the link in the description or scan the QR code and take the quiz to get started today. Well, you heard it here first. Go ahead and hit up that link in the description down below and let's get festive. Back to the video. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead. This one's for you, Kayla. Tell me when. I want to point out how many people are concerned on how long it consistently takes for you to tell me when. That's and then this one's for me. Yeah, I don't get why people, why do, why do wine glasses exist? Why is it inappropriate to drink wine out of any other vessel? It's about the aeration. It's bullshit. I'm supposed to be reading a book right now. Come Let's on. go. <laughs> so getting into this, yes. we have the court. The last book, she was in the winter court. The spring court thing. In the last book? Yeah. 
Okay, she was in the spring court. Well, I, I was sorry. I thought it was the winter court because the beginning was all snowy and icy with the wolf. That's why. But so she was in the spring court. This book, it's blue. So she's going to the winter court. Okay. Oh, wait. Part, what's this? Part one. Wait, there's just what the? F this is wild. There's just the title page, some text, <laughs> then the part one, then chapter. Prep me, lube me. All right, I'm gonna start with this. Maybe it always been broken and dark inside. Maybe someone who'd been born whole and good would have put down the ash dagger and embraced death rather than what lay before me. That is an opener. There was blood everywhere. It was an effort to keep a grip on the dagger as my blood soaked hand trembled. Uh, okay, there's a little bit of, okay, I see the prose criticism coming in. As I fractured bit by bit while sprawled corpses. Wait, what? I knew the words she'd say the prayer she'd recite. I knew I'd slaughter her as I slaughtered the youth before me to free them all, to free Tamlin. I would do it. Wait, what are we, what, what, I, what? Okay, mm -hmm. right. I'm hooked. That's a hook. It's in, it got my nipple a little. <laughs> Amarantha drawled, her deep red hair as bright as the blood of my hands on the marble. What? I'm so confused. Is this a goddamn dream? My fingers loosened on the dagger and it clattered to the ground, splattering the spreading pool of blood. Flex splash onto my own. That's a sip and sip. It might as well have been one of my fever dreams these last few months. If it's a dream and she just mentioned a dream and I faced the female waiting for death, that hood sagging over her head, her little body steady, braced for- the, If it's her own image looking back at her, Kayla, it better not- I will take back the compliments I gave. Two seconds later. I knew the face that stared up at me. No! No! Don't do it! Don't do it, Sarah J. Mass! The balls to make your opening a dream sequence of you killing yourself, acknowledge the dream in the dream, then the real cojones, take it out of the actual start of the book, put it before. That is Sarah J Mass pulling out a schlong and slapping it down on the table. It's like delicious though. <laughs> my face and plunge the ash dagger into my awaiting heart. That's just, wow. Like, I'm not being sarcastic. That opening, like, good, like, cheers. That's chapter one, I vomited into the toilet. What the f We just went from like the traumatic memory to <clears throat> When it seemed like I was done heaving, I eased from the toilet, but didn't go far. Just to the adjacent wall near the cracked window where I could see the night sky, where the breeze could care. Where the breeze could caress my sick. I just didn't, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's on me, that's entirely on me. <clears throat> where a breeze could caress my sick, sick sickly face. I leaned my head against the wall, flattening my hands against the chill marble floor. Real. This was real. I had survived. I'd made it out. That's actually right on the money for when I've had anxiety attacks. I try to focus on te like texture, touching stuff, cool things. Mm -hmm. I really keep track of time in my head for some reason. This is actually like lining up to a, like represent an anxiety attack, especially one that you wake up to, which is the worst start to a day, waking up to an anxiety attack. <sighs> Unless it was a dream, just a fever dream in an Amaranthus dungeon. And I'd waken back to that cell and I curled my knees to my chest. Real, real. I mouthed the words. I kept mouthing them until I could loosen my grip on my legs and lift my head. Pain splintered through my hands. I had somehow curled them into fists so tightly my nails were close to puncturing my skin. Immortal strength. I actually wanna ask you a question about women. I have seen many times in books, authors write about like nails puncturing your own palms. My nails have never been that long. Like I could not do that. Is that just because you have longer nails like female characters that's actually a thing or no? I mean, I've never punctured them and I have anxiety attacks, but like 
You do can't you can do this, and I have drawn blood before. So you can you can I do it. I feel more for me it's more like I scratch them open because I'm like clenching so hard. But yeah. This has been your latest episode of Middle School Health Class with Daniel. The eye etched into the center of my palm seemed to watch me, calm and cunning as a cat. Its slitted pupil wider than it had been earlier that day, as if adjusting to the light as any ordinary eye would. Okay, that's cool. That's a good detail. That is interesting. I also am giving credit here for portraying like genuinely going through trauma and like having it bother them. I hadn't heard from Reese in the three months I'd been here. Not a whisper. I hadn't dared ask Tamlin or Lucian or anyone. One week with him every month in exchange for his saving me from the brink of death. Okay, I am learning so much about the previous book and I'm gonna say it's pretty well woven in. Like you, a lot of authors like to do this. It's a choice, not everyone does. I, my publisher Bryce does not. Um, at the beginning of your first book, or the second book, you kind of summarize the events of the first in some form of way to fold it in. Having someone going through the trauma of the last book in an anxiety attack, solid way to do it. Tamlin remained asleep as I crept back into my darkened bedroom. His naked body sprawled across the mattress. For a moment, I just admired the powerful muscles on his back, so lovingly traced by the moonlight. His golden hair must with sleep, and the fingers I'd run through it. That was an embarrassing pause. Well, it made, <laughs> we made love earlier. Gah! He never woke when the nightmares dragged me from sleep. Never woke when I vomited my guts out night after night. If he knew or heard, he said nothing about it. Okay, interesting. I'm trying to figure out if you could regularly sleep through someone puking. I can no one sleeping me through through me vomiting. Yeah, yeah. Kayla will back me up on this. This is not something that I choose. I am a scream vomiter. It is not. It is not like what it sounds like. If you've never heard of this. So bad. Shut up. Basically, don't actually shut up. I love you. But when the actual like muscle constriction action action of vomiting happens in my body, I involuntarily also scream. It's not from pain or anything, but <laughs> it's real. And it made all of my college roommates hate me. <laughs> Anyway, now you all know that about me. I'm a scream vomiter. Let's move on. That is something that, like every person I become friends with, we have to get to know at some point. Yeah. Because like, you know, I have anxiety attacks. I probably vomit once a month and it will happen in the vicinity of a good friend at some point. And then they will hear the noise. <laughs> and then I really get to figure out if they're a hardcore friend or not. Now, we are on chapter 55, uh, which we have been informed is quite <laughs> the tantalizing chapter. I watched him consume every spoonful, his eyes darting between where I stood and the soup. I've been in that situation before. I have been exactly in that situation before and I will not explain. Oh, I was supposed to predict. Oh, you were. I was supposed to predict. <laughs> so. Predictions now. Tamlin and her started having some contentious problems, not on the best terms, and that is why her and Reese are about to have some soup. You know what I'm saying? Reese twisted in his seat toward me, and now, aware of every breath, every moment, I sat in his lap. His hands gently braced my hips as I studied his face, and now I want you to know, Reese and, that I love you, that I want you to know his lips trembled and I brushed away the tear that escaped down his cheek. Oh, he's a softy. <gasps> I love him. I want, <laughs> I want you to know, I whispered that I am broken and healing, but every piece of my heart belongs to you. And I am honored, honored to be your mate. This, no, this is coerced. It's too far. She's doing this for a reason. It's over the, she wouldn't be totally to the point where in the text, in the book immediately, she's like, my heart, 100% yours. Tamlin, Tam who? No, not happening. This is under some form of coercion. His arms wrapped around me and he pressed his forehead to my shoulder. His body shaking, I stroked a hand through his silken hair. 
I love you, I said again. I hadn't dared say the words in my head. And I'd endure every second of it over again so I could find you. And if war comes, we'll face it. Together. I won't let them take me from you. And I won't let them take you from me either. Bryson looked up, his face gleaming with tears. He went still as I leaned in, kissing away one tear, then another. And he had once... As he had- oh, that's a sip! I'm in the middle of drama, damn! As he had once kissed mine away, when my lips were wet and sultry with them, I pulled back far enough to see his eyes. You're mine, I breathed. His body shuddered with what might have been a sob, but his lips found my own. It was gentle, soft, the kiss he might have given me if we'd been granted time and peace to meet across our two separate worlds to court each other. I slid my arms around his shoulders, opening my mouth to him, and his tongue slipped in, caressing my own mate, my mate. What is happening? So she's just in it? You've read this book, so she's just 100% in. You gotta read the end still, baby, then I get to tell oh. I am enthralled. I can't even like predict or anything. Cause like, I, I want to say it's like if I just walked up to like a window and just opened like a, a, like a telenovela, but like only every hour and just watched a scene. And like, you know, by the end of like five hours, I'm going to be like, I wouldn't know. Now let's fuck. All right. <laughs> he hardened against me and I groaned into his mouth. Ben, have a great time making a montage out of this awkward editing sex montage. The sound snapped whatever leash he'd had on himself, and Reason scooped me up in a smooth movement before laying me flat on the table. Uh, he deepened the kiss, and I wrapped my legs around his back, hooked him closer. She likes the down my stuff. skin, as his he hands his slid head. under my sweater and went up, up to cup my breasts. And he braced a hand beside my head, smacked atop a pallet of paint. He let out a low laugh, and I watched, breathless, as he took that hand and traced a circle around my breast, then lower, until he painted a downward arrow beneath my belly button. Lest you forget where this is going to end, he said. Okay. That wasn't my favorite. That was, that's strange dirty talk. That's the dirty talk of an Alzheimer's patient. His mouth crashed into mine. That's risky. I've clashed teeth. We've clashed teeth before. It is not fun. <laughs> Found my waist, and I bucked my hips off the table to help him remove my socks, my leggings. <sighs> Reese pulled back again, and I let out a bark of protest that choked off into a gasp as he gripped my thighs and yanked me to the edge of the table through paints and brushes and cups of water, hooked my legs over his shoulders to rest on either side of those beautiful wings and knelt before me, knelt on those stars and mountains inked on his knees. He would bow for no one and nothing but his mate, his equal, the first lick I'm t ah you fuckers who chose this chapter good god ah I want you splayed out on the table like my own personal feast I went over the edge again and when I was trembling half sobbing limp with pleasure did Reese rise from the floor he looked me over naked covered in paint his own face and body smeared with it and gave me a slow satisfied male smile uh, male smile gave me a slow satisfied male smile do we smile a certain- I wanted the wall. There's some, I get it, there's some sexy walls out there. I wanted him to just take me against the wall, but he carried me into the room I'd been using and set me down on the bed with heartbreaking gentleness. Holy, I thought he was the bad boy. Whatever. Holy naked, I watched as he, I'm so, I'm not comfortable reading this live on a recording. We've reached a point. I, it's not that like I have anything against pornography. I don't want there to be footage of me reading this. Do you know what the internet could do? We're skipping to the end. All right. I took his paint smeared face between my own colorful hands and made him look at me. His eyes were radiant like the stars I'd painted once long ago. And I smiled at Reese as I let that 
mating bond shine clear and luminous between us. And then there's a break of time. Zero context on where the story is going. I wanted to try and predict the ending. What have I got? <laughs> This is like being an investigator in the 1850s, just showing up to a crime scene like, I don't know. <sighs> like the obvious thing to say, cause I have nothing, I'm grasping at straws, is that like, recent Tamlin end up in a fight, but that's too predictable. And it seems like Tamlin is just completely not relevant to the story right now, cause he wasn't even a thought to Fire during any of that. Damn girl, you cold, Jesus. Um, I'm gonna say, that whatever antagonist ended up being the one they're directly confronting in the end action scene uh, was defeated last chapter. We're, we're now doing a full post battle scene last chapter. And in that chapter, now Tamlin drama is going to come back into play. And it's gonna be setting up book three because at this point, Sarah J. Mass knew book one was a success. And so she knew she was gonna be able to do a longer series. And so it's more directly setting up a book three. That's my prediction. You want me to just read 69? Whatever you feel like. Okay. The last chapter, to no one's surprise, is in the perspective of Fire. Tamlin, the first word is Tamlin! The first word! I was right! <laughs> oh my God! At the buzzer, in the last moment, he calls it! Oh! Oh! Tamlin landed us in the gravel of the front drive. And you sold us out, sold out every innocent in this land for that, all so you could have me back. What happened here? This is intense. Okay, so here's what I'm trying to say happened in the book. Firay died or moved dimensions or courts or something in a way that she thought she would never be able to get back from for some reason. I'm reaching here, but I'm, I'm trying something. Uh, so she moved on with, from Tamlin and began a new life. But Tamlin did some crazy sh to bring her back. And now she's back after having kind of moved on and it's weird. Tamlin's figured it out and the boy ain't happy. And now there's some kind of sick psychological game going on. That is my lock-in. All right. Okay, that's the lock-in. Put in the prison doors, Ben. <laughs> you know what needs reforming? The US prison system. I, I feel like the Pink Panther, just going along with a magnifying glass, just da 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 sexy. So our game began. We hit the sweeping marble stairs to the front door of the manor. And so Tamlin unwittingly led the High Lady of the Night Court into the heart of his territory. I love this. Wow. I don't want to read them. I want to do the whole series like this. <laughs> I think it is enthralling to just jump in and catch up and like just open that telenovela window and be like, whoa, she's pregnant now and it's her brother's slam. Do you want to hear what has happened or do you want a quick uh Yeah, give me a little give me a little rundown. I I'm so much more confused now. I now predict that Feyre is going to actually turn out to have been caught by Tamlin and he's gonna pull a, I knew you were a double agent the whole time and she's gonna get in a bad situation and is going to get somewhat rescued, somewhat save herself from directly confronting Tamlin. And in some ways, the broader courts are going to start getting involved. And more people than we thought possible are going to end up on the side of the night court in some ways. Because we, in the first book, were only fed the propaganda side of Tamlin's shenanigans. So that's my opinion on the matter. I think I got it more right in the first book. I'm way less sure now, but what I will say for sure uh, is Ben has some serious blackmail against me after reading that sex scene if he wants to run with it. Thank you everybody for tuning on in to this episode of First and Last, uh, A Court of Mist and Fury edition, which uh, I like that title more now that I know about the events of this book. Thank you, Bright Sellers, for sponsoring this video and have a great one, y'all. Peace. Has anyone ever called you Benjamin Buttons, Ben?
You can keep this in. I don't know. I just want to know. Has anyone ever been like, hey, Benjamin Buttons? I, I don't want you to Benjamin Buttons. I hope you're the reverse Benjamin Buttons. Okay. So he just ages. <laughs>